The story you are about to see was inspired by actual events. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Tuesday afternoon, blazing hot in Los Angeles. McCarran and I were working the day shift out of robbery homicide when the call came in. Jumper from a downtown hotel. One and a half million out-of-towners flock to the L.A. Convention Center every year. These people see a different L.A. than the city that we know. For them, Los Angeles is a downtown hotel, the Universal Tour, Disneyland, walk down Hollywood Boulevard. Most managed to survive. This man didn't. My name's Friday. I'm a cop. Why'd we get called on the jumper? Because he was dead before he fell. Take a look. Shot with a small caliber handgun. Get a screen around the body. Todd Barnes. He's a home appliance rep in town for a houseware convention. Some guests heard a shot around 11, but assumed it was on the street. Joe Friday, LAPD, Detective McCarran. Hi. Uh, Hal. Hal Eliason. He was a friend of yours? Yeah. I, mean, I just spoke to his wife. She's flying in. From Iowa? Des Moines. That's where we're all from. There's uh, nine of us from Den Home Housewares. Where were you when it happened? Just a couple of rooms down. I was speaking to him on the phone. He was uh, getting into the shower, and he said he would leave the door cracked for me. When you came down, it was open? Yes, but the room was empty. And then I, I saw the blood out there on the, on the balcony. What do you think? Door was open, shooter walked in. Caught Barnes on the balcony, put one in his forehead, stumbled backwards. One over. Get a contact for Lassen. No robbery, no apparent motive. A cop's worst fear. You hope for something, anything that tells you it's not just random. A dead end. Wife's here. They just brought him from the airport. We used to make a little vacation out of these conventions. You'd come with your husband. We'd cash in his business class plane ticket. All cramming in his hotel room, me and the kids. We have three. You didn't join him this year. You no, know, money was tight. The economy and all. Todd said he needed focus. You know, he was a real hard worker. Any problems at home? <sighs> this probably sounds real Midwestern, but... And Todd was a good man. He was a good family man. It just doesn't make any sense, you know? What's wrong with this world? It wasn't the first time I'd heard the question. And it wasn't the first time I couldn't answer it. The canvas SID ballistics turned up nothing. The victim had no priors, no notable enemies, no double indemnity life insurance policy. The public doesn't realize that over 30% of homicides go unsolved. After three months, I had a bad feeling that this one was headed for the cold case file. And I'd have to tell Mrs. Barnes that her husband's murder may never be solved. But some things turn on luck alone. Cops over lunch, swapping war stories. Every once in a while, you catch a break. Air out in Palmdale. Three months back, a guy responds to a knock at the door. Bam, shot in the face. Ballistics, canvas, forensics, zip. Tomorrow, I got to tell the guy's daughter, we can't find your daddy's killer. Did you get a good slug from that shooting? Good hunch, Lieutenant. Check it out. Identical markings. The slug pulled from the housewares wrap was fired from the same gun that killed the guy in Palmdale. Three-point match to the jumper. Looks like we're back in business.
same M.O. Peter Turner, real estate broker, Palmdale, opens his front door, gets shot in the head. Todd Barnes, houseware salesman, Iowa, leaves his hotel door open, gets shot in the head. Same weapon, both murders. What connects them? Both salesmen, both family men. Hold off on that one. Palmdale Sheriff records say that Peter Turner did two years at Men's Colony, molesting his daughter. Cross-reference phone records, emails, address books. Something will double up that will tie Peter Turner and Todd Barnes together. Something did. I worked the phone records. Both victims called the same number in Westwood belonging to a Nicole Harrison. There's more. Nicole Harrison is Peter Turner of Palmdale's daughter. Molested daughter. We had a person who could tell us something about Peter Turner, his daughter. Hi. I'm Detective McCarran. This is Detective Cooper. May we come in? Yeah, please. I'm sorry about the heat. It's so hot. The AC's not working. So, um, did you get him? Who's that? The guy who shot my father. No, oh, ma'am. We have Well, where's Marino? We're working on the cases in conjunction with the Sheriff's Department. What do you mean, cases? Do you know this man, Miss Harrison? He doesn't look familiar, no. That's Todd Barnes from Iowa. He was murdered with the same weapon that was used to kill your father two weeks after your father's murder. <sighs> I'm sorry. I, uh... It's just been hard, you know, with my dad's death. What's, um, what's his name again? Todd Barnes. Do you know him? No, I, I, I don't. We accessed his phone records. He's called you over 400 times in the last year. Including a call to your number the night before he was killed. He must be a client. What business are you in, Miss Harrison? God, it's uh, kind of embarrassing, but I do adult video chat. I've got my webcam, my costumes. Sorry, I'm not a video chat kind of guy, Miss Harrison. Oh, OK. See, guys go to this website, thepeepingtom.com, where lots of girls like myself are categorized. They just click on my icon, fantasy girl. I make a very good living, and I never have to leave the house. They pay me $3.99 a minute to, um, you know, fulfill their fantasies. So it's like being a stripper, only it's over the internet. Except. You make more, and there's no drunk guys pawing at you. How'd Todd Barnes get your home phone number? Well, sometimes clients IM me for my number so that they can hear my voice while they watch me on video. Beats all that back and forth typing. You ever meet him offline? No, I, I don't meet my clients, never. I don't even know what they look like. Weird part of what I do. Remember where you were on Wednesday, August 17th? Is that when this guy was shot? Yeah. Wednesday, I was here. I was working, you can check. What do you think? I think this town needs girls like that alive. <laughs> You're not buying that whole victim thing, are you? You like her, don't you? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping Tom Breckers verified Nicole was online at the time both murders were committed. Yeah, but listen to that transcript. Nicole, my father was a monster. You think I do what I do because I like it? I'm on the internet for a reason. I can't be intimate with real people. Who's she telling that to? Some guy with the screen name Lurker. It goes on. Nicole, sometimes I wish you would die for what he did. Lurker, he deserves to. Ain't mentioned the Todd Barnes? Nah, it's all about her father and how she hated him. So this guy Lurker might have acted on it. Yeah, it was, um, a few months ago. Lurker just wanted me to be his wife. His wife? Yeah, it was a role play, you know. He never asked me to strip, just talk. He'd come online every day, and we'd talk about our day. Like husband and wife. Did he ever ask you questions about your father? 
We talked about some pretty personal stuff, I guess, yeah. You know about your father's record? You had a great childhood. Did you ever suspect Lurker when your father was killed? Nicole, I know this is hard. I'm really scared. Why are you scared? I haven't been completely honest with you guys. Yesterday morning, I found this on my doorstep. Don't share a secret, sign Lurker. No postmark, no stamp? He knows where I live. The Peeping Tom server gave us the real name for Lurker off his credit card. John Soddy, 1224 Maplewood. No rap sheet besides some traffic citations. SID just said they're gonna need a few days for the forensics on the package he sent to Nicole. I'm not waiting on that. Let's get some backup, pop this guy. Serve the warrant. First priority is the 38. Detective McCarran, LAPD. We have a warrant search the premises, ma'am. John, police are right there! John, police are right there! John Sadi, I'm Detective McCarran, LAPD. This is Detective Cooper. We have a warrant search the Hey, listen, why do you keep coming back? Sir, just take it easy. Take it easy. What about y'all? What about taking it easy? John, you're too many people. Why do you keep doing this to us? Why? Uh, uh, client was arrested and held for 73 days after 9-11. I understand that, sir. But our records never indicate. What records? He wasn't allowed counsel, never formally charged. He couldn't even tell his family where he was detained. Our investigation has no relation to terrorism, Mr. Abrahimi. Well, how's my client supposed to know that when five armed cars break into his living you room? You want to keep this simple? Mr. Saudi, tell me where you were the night that Peter Turner was murdered. Baba. Sharing her father, me, man. Murdered she, man, not well, can't get back. Nigger on it, nigger on it, na bosh. I was in San Diego on business. I stayed out on Coronado. You familiar with the website called The Peeping Tom? The Peeping Tom? We know you ran up a thousand dollar charge on the site last month. This is your credit card statement. Hey, Baba, in she was here, she turned over a key, didn't go, couldn't she have followed a man? Oh, hasty, oh, hasty, oh, hasty. I have never seen this before. Expect us to believe that? Mr. Saadi was released only a few weeks ago. He has not seen his statements because your government has confiscated his mail. Hotel confirmed that Saadi stayed three nights at Delmonico on Coronado. SID found no cookies from the Peeping Tom on his hard drive. Someone stole his credit card and set up a Peeping Tom account. All right, get him out of here before we get hit with a civil suit. I say we get Nicole to set up a meeting with Lurker and we nail him. Should you do that? I think I can talk her into it. No. I'd be too nervous. I mean, he'd know. Look, the meeting place will be crawling with undercover cops. He'll be wearing protective clothing. It'll be completely safe. But can't you just track down the guy's computer or something? I mean... We're on that, but this guy knows what he's doing. It's gonna take time. You saw what he sent me. This guy may have killed two people. We get him. You're out of the woods. I can't do it. You know, I'm sorry. I just, I can't. All right, you're scared. I suppose you just set up a meeting. I don't actually go. Right. You just contact Lurker. Set it up. We'll take it from there. He's really a smart guy. I mean, he knows where I live. You know, what if he figures it out? I mean, I would want someone to be here with me when you arrest him, just in case. I can arrange for that. Are you 
sure it's a good idea for you to provide protective custody? What are you talking about? You know what I mean. That's the only way I could get her to set up Lurk. I'll wear the pink dress. How do I look? Cheap. Good. Don't give this guy too much time. Once I make the positive ID, I give the signal. There's no telling what he's going to do when he finds out you're not in the call. I know. Job. Makes me feel a lot safer. husband, Ronald Harrison. You married? He passed away. I keep his name, though. Keeps him alive. I'm sorry. He took his own life. I wasn't a very good wife. I'm really very good at anything, you know? I'm not very good offline. What do you mean? All day long, I do these fantasies for people. But face to face, it's a different story. I, I freeze up. It's not that I want to be distant. I mean, I want to be close. I wanted that with my husband. But every time I would start to climax, see his face. Whose face? My father. I get so close, you know, and then I'd lose it. It's pretty horrible, huh? I just 
keep wondering if I'm over it. It's been a long time. Call. Oh. Two v three twenty two and you dispatch working twenty. Look, he knows where you live and he knows you set him up. He's not going to stop at a pot shot through a window. I don't care. I'm not going into protective custody like a criminal. When the shot was fired, where were you? I was standing right over there. I was standing right here. He was aiming at me. You're the new competition. RO information on suspect's vehicle is Howard Sims, 1005 Parkwood. Take it down. Clear those two rooms. Clear. Lots of bills, past due. That's why he stole credit cards. Finances peeping Tom have it. 38 Bulldog, you're a lucky man, Jimmy. Nearly shot, that's lucky. Thought Nicole said she never met him. She told me that, too. Jimmy! Hey! Hey, hey! Look out! You're hurting me! You're hurting me! You're hurting me! One served in Desert Storm Infantry, Section 895, after being declared unfit for military service. You get ballistics. Slugs from Barnes and Turner match the slug we pulled from Nicole's kitchen. He's ours. What happens from here is up to you. We have evidence to convict you of first-degree murder. You could be facing death. Living or dying depends upon your cooperation. What do you know about us? Who is us? Me and the Queen of England. Talking about you and Nicole. Of course. We are together. Yeah. We, we saw the picture of you at your apartment. What was your relationship? You couldn't even begin to understand what we feel for each other. How often did you see her? As often as I could afford to. Did she tell you what her father did to her? He came into her bedroom. And he told her he loved her. He put a pillow over her face and he held her down and he raped his own daughter. Is that why you killed him? No. Then why'd you kill him? Because Nicole asked me to. understand why you were angry with Peter Turner, but the other man, Todd Barnes, the appliance salesman, what did he do? Why did he have to die? Now it's obvious. I know you can hear what I'm thinking. Why'd you kill Barnes, Howard? Todd Barnes. I snuck into the chat room and I saw how she talked to him, what she did for him. I knew what he wanted. He came to L.A. for her. But if I can't be with her, then no one else. Was it jealousy? Do you want to use the word change my face? She was only going to talk to me. She was mine. Stop talking. Oh, you stop talking. 
I'll file, but I'm going to authorize a psych evaluation to see if Sims is fit to stand trial. So you self to time. He's not. Nicole lied to me. She said she never met Sims offline. Now Sims tells me she put him up to murdering her father. And we have a photo that puts him together. Conspiracy. Good luck with that. All Nicole has to claim is that she was stalked by a lunatic. A lunatic she manipulated. To get Nicole on any murder, you have to show that she put Sims in a frame of mind to commit the crime on her behalf. Did you read the instant message transcripts? Complaining her father raped her isn't solicitation of murder. Thank God you got him. That is just a huge weight off my shoulders. He's in the jail ward at L.A. General. He told you he was crazy. Yeah, he did. I'd like to ask you some questions. Did you ever meet Howard Sims, lurker, offline? No, I told you, I don't meet clients. All right. I'd explain this, then. I want to talk to my lawyer. Nicole lied about knowing. And now she's lawyered up so you can forget about getting anything else out of her. She had no reason to lie unless she was complicit. She's betting she can lie better than Sims can tell the truth. Very creative, but say I file. Her lawyer will just claim that everything Nicole said to Sims online was role play. An actress playing the part. Just got the results back from Sims' psych evaluation. Schizoid erotomania. Out in five, high in lithium, and in the meantime, useless as a witness. Get me something more than a frame of mind case and I'll file. But right now, Nicole's a long shot. Take the bird in hand. I'd seen that look before. A cop realizing that a case isn't always solved just by catching a killer. It's about convicting the truly guilty. Howard Sims would be off the streets. The law has closed the case and ended the investigation. But some people can't accept this. For them, it lives on. So they go to the past, examine another death. What? Tell me what. Nicole Harrison was married to Ronald Harrison who committed suicide. Probate records show he left her over 200,000 bucks. Yeah? She also got 100,000 bucks from a life insurance policy after her dad died. Hmm. I got the name of the investigating officer in the husband's death. So what are you waiting for? You're lucky you found me in time. I'm about to retire. It's Eastern Oregon. Short time, huh? <laughs> you got it, partner. Yeah, no. Let's see. Ronald Harrison. Yeah, you remember it? During a uh, trial I had going for a double murder. It took over a year to complete. Yeah, they uh, rolled me on a Harrison suicide during a recess in a uh, motion here. Oh, let's just die off himself. That's the file. I had a cute little wife. She was, uh, she was heartbroken. I appreciate this. No problem. As a boss at work said he was in good spirits. He pays his union dues three months in advance and he's building a deck on the back of his house. Who? Nicole Harrison's husband. Let me guess. You're not buying suicide. Something's not right. I'm telling you. Calvin Coolidge said that perseverance and determination alone are omnipotent. He was right. Jimmy Hoffa to get me up here this early. If I could have done it on the phone, I would have. It was the same clothes you were wearing yesterday? Yeah. You know, McCarran, this is no way to make a lieutenant. You're going to forgive me when I show you. Nicole's first husband committed suicide, right? 
put a gun like this between his legs and the one was here on his chest. You know, Jimmy, I think you've had too much coffee. Just go with me. If the blood drops, they change direction. He was shot standing up. Exactly. Here. Go ahead. Try it. One was right there in his chest. Go ahead, top yourself. Go ahead. You can't reach the trigger, can you? Murder. That's right. 41 years on the force. I know when a guy blows his head off. Fatal shot was to his heart. Heart, head. It was suicide. This guy you spoke to, Greg Larson. The guy who alibied Nicole. Yeah, Larson. He did custom car paint. The night of Harrison's death, he was striping her lowrider. Stories match. Well, we find that uh, Nicole's not too reliable. And in going over your files, I noticed you never even checked the weapon for Larson's fingerprints. <clears throat> Look, as I told your partner, this came down during that whole double homicide investigation. Maybe you missed something. Yeah, it wasn't time to dig into it. We have time now. Was there a GSR test done on the victim? Joe, I'm a short timer, remember? I'm right here at the finish line. Look. Say Larson did kill Nicole's husband. It doesn't matter. The guy's been taken care of. What do you mean, taken care of? The year after that, we got him in two armed robberies. 30 years up in Folsom. Enjoy your retirement. Mr. Larson. I'm Detective McCarran, LAPD. I'd like to ask you some questions about Ronald Harrison. We found your prints on the weapon that was used to kill him. Oh, man. I thought this was going to be a parole hearing. Tomorrow, the DA will file charges against you for the murder of Ronald Harrison, unless you give us a reason not to. So that bitch is talking, huh? We're just trying to find out what happened. What happened is Nicole wanted him dead. I mean, that's why you guys are here, right? I mean, it's not just because of me. I'm not worth it. Did we waste our time, Mr. Larson? Depends. When do I get out? We make the murder case and you never cooperate and you could get a chance at parole. Pete's dying in prison. Hey, I'm sorry. I don't have time for you guys right now. I'm in the middle of a session. What? You're in the middle of murder. What do you mean, murder? You think I killed my father? This isn't about your father. Then who? It's about your husband, Ronald Harris. Nicole's defense filed a motion in limine to suppress all evidence from the murder of her father. Come on. It establishes a pattern of behavior that Nicole's done this before. They're saying it's prejudicial to the jury, claiming you can't unring a bell. Will it work? Unless I can prove that it won't. The defendant's father was killed in the same manner as the defendant's husband. Preliminary hearings, evidentiary hearings, all in order to determine what may or may not be admissible in a trial. Your Honor, my client has not been connected in any way to the tragic death of her father. This is just a hearing, Mr. LaPlatt. I'd like everything on the table. Evidence relating to the death of Nicole Harrison's father could show that once again an assailant was recruited to commit the crime. The Peeping Tom transcripts speak directly to the relevance of this to the state's current case. Well, what's up? The judge admitted the Turner evidence. The peeping Tom transcripts? The transcripts, she was held to answer. Yes! How did Nicole Harrison first propose that you kill her husband? She joked about it when we were getting it on. Where were you at the time? Where we usually were, in bed over at my place. And then one day she mentioned it. She wasn't joking. Did she ever offer you anything in exchange for your help? Yeah. There was money. Old Ronnie inherited some money. She said we were going to split it and live happily ever after. Did you ever receive any money? Hell no. 
Once Ronnie was dead, she didn't want to know me. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Larson. Well, you've admitted killing Ronald Harrison and then staging the crime scene to make it look like a suicide. So given the fact that you're a convicted armed robber, my question is, how many years? Excuse me? How many years did the DA knock off your sentence for having you lie that someone Objection, else was involved conjecture. with Mr. Harrison? Objection, conjecture. Sustain, Mr. LaPlatt. The jury will disregard the last statement by defense counsel. This case has special significance for you, doesn't it, detective? They're all significant. I don't know what you mean. Personal significance. Have you spent time alone with the defendant? Only in the course of duty. Hmm. Well, it's my understanding that interviews with witnesses or suspects are normally done by teams, usually two detectives. Can you explain the reason for that? For purposes of verification. So why'd you violate that rule, detective? I didn't violate that rule, counselor. Do you deny that you went to my client's apartment and you spent time with her alone? I was there to provide protection for her during an undercover operation. Alone? I wasn't there to interview or extract information. Well, isn't that when you learned that she'd formerly been married? Yes. And isn't that when you, acting ostensibly as her protector, encouraged her to reveal her most profound feelings regarding her sexuality? No. And that's when you took your shot at seducing her, isn't it? Absolutely not. And she rejected you, didn't she? And that is why we are here today, a vendetta. Objection. This line of questioning has no purpose other than badgering this witness. I'll withdraw. No more questions. Ms. Harrison, do you acknowledge that after Ronnie Harrison's death, you were the sole beneficiary of his estate, valued at over $200,000? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes. How long before your husband's death did you begin your extramarital affair with Mr. Larson? I wasn't having an affair with Mr. Larson. Well, according to Mr. Larson, your affair began right around the time your husband's will was drafted. Now, would you say that was just a coincidence, Ms. Harrison, or was that a plan? My relationship with Mr. Larson wasn't sexual. We were just friends. A friend that you enlisted to kill your husband. Larson wanted to be with me, and I wouldn't. He was very jealous. Your witness, Mr. LaPlatt. Well, let's not leave this hanging in the air. Nicole, were you intimate with Greg Larson? You know I wasn't. How would I know that? How would anyone know that? Because I couldn't be, because I'm damaged. What do you mean, damaged? I was raped by my father. It was something that my husband, Ronnie, and I dealt with quite a lot. He thought that I was cold. I uh, couldn't make him believe that I loved him. I would try, but I just couldn't. Every time that we would have sex, I'd see his face. See who? My father. I blame myself that Ronnie died. I know that I hurt him so much, and I'm so sorry. But I loved my husband. He was a good man. We wanted a... We wanted a family. I wouldn't have hurt him for anything in the world. Did you ever suspect Mr. Larson of killing your husband and making it look like a suicide? No. But I can see... I can see the possibility. I mean, he wanted to be with me. What do you think? Could go either way. This bitch walks, I swear to you. She walks, she walks. You did your job. That's all that's important to us. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? Laws are written to protect the innocent. And what is that verdict? We, the members of the jury, find the defendant, Nicole Harrison, not guilty of murder in the first degree. And because of that, guilty people sometimes go free. Right. 
It's a hard lesson, learning to take the verdict and move on. It's what a cop does. Howard Sims was deemed unfit to stand trial for the murder of Peter Turner and Todd Barnes. He is currently in a Tescadero State Mental Facility undergoing treatment. Greg Larson was allowed to plead guilty to voluntary manslaughter in exchange for his testimony against Nicole Harrison. He was sentenced to an additional 15 years in prison. He will be eligible for parole in 2031.